Good morning and welcome to Professional Builders Show Village Live presented by Western Window Systems. I'm your host, Adam Grubb. This is day two and hour one of our show here at Show Village. At the International Builders Show in Las Vegas, it is warmer today than it was yesterday, but by about three degrees and no wind. So that, that part is, uh, is great news. We've had a, uh, an incredible first day of content and day two is even bigger and better. And we're really excited to have all of our guests here uh, today. We start out with Nigel Maynard who's the Editor-in-Chief of Products and Custom Builder. Nigel, nice to see you. Thanks for coming here, and thanks for being uh, part of the show. Thanks for having me. So as you've been going through, you spent the day yesterday at, at the International Builder Show through the hall. There is a, a lot of excitement. There's a lot of people there. We're hearing great numbers, and we're hearing great things. Is that really indicative of where the market space is right now in construction as you see it? Oh, sure. I think when you talk to builders or modelers, they're more optimistic about buying and renovating and uh, manufacturers are optimistic about products, and so everything is, everything is humming along pretty nicely. Where, where do you see the next couple years when it comes to products specifically and manufacturers creating products uh, around the skilled labor, around a labor shortage and the need for a, a, just a better workforce in general? Do you see manufacturers creating products specifically designed for, to help that problem? Oh, certainly. I, I think it started about maybe three years ago, maybe four years ago. And now it's really building up steam. So there are fewer, manu there are fewer builders of um, bricks and laborers for uh, carpenters. So manufacturers are now coming up with systems. And so you don't need a mason on site anymore. Right. You can do stone walls with a carpenter. You can you know, erect a house without a carpenter. Well, you still need a carpenter on site. but. You can have laborers and have these panelized systems. Everything comes set in a truck and you just load them up. Um, it reduces your time, reduces the labor force. Your, your job as uh, editor-in-chief of Products Magazine is, is one of the coolest because you get access to things that most people don't. Uh, when it comes yes. to the new products that are out there, and this show is, is probably uh, a candy store for you sure. going through to see all the new things. What's impressed you inside? What, what have you seen that, that you are wowed by? Because I'm sure it's tough to wow you. You've seen most <laughs> things. But what, what gets you, what's getting you excited in there? Well, I think I'm seeing a continuation of some trends that started maybe, again, about five, four years ago. So there's more tech in products, whether it's doorknobs, appliances, fans, anything that can be plugged in or anything that has a battery can have a Wi-Fi or a Wi-Fi right. connection. And then there are products that are targeted to those consumers who want nice things but can't afford them. Because we're an aspirational bunch in this country. Yeah. So we see the high-end stuff, whether it's on HDTV or in magazines, and we want it. So manufacturers are now coming out with products that they look expensive and they look like high-end, but they're at a price point that's much more attainable to the average buyer. The connected home and the smart home and the controlled home and whatever, the, the fully automated home, those, are, those, those seem almost futuristic in, in a way, but everything is happening here. Now we just have to figure out a way to connect all of those together so that everything works the way it's supposed to work. Are you seeing anybody really coming out saying, hey, where are the people that are going to connect all these things together so these, these work the way they should inside the home? You know, what's interesting is that I see it coming from companies that aren't necessarily in the building products industry. You have Amazon, Google, Samsung. <clears throat> Those companies are not allowing different products in the home to coordinate through Alexa or some other module or some other hub because you have door products, you have the fan, you have the appliances. You have so many different things that you're talking to. Now you can all talk to them through Alexa or some similar product. How important is, the, is that really for the home building industry to maintain a level of sophistication and of next generation ideas and communicate with Google, with Amazon, with these companies that are not typically in the building space to, to make things great? Well, it's important because the future buyers are the people who are very, very much connected to those brands. The millennials, they're going to start buying homes in earnest in the next few years, and some of them have already started. So with that bunch, if, you don't, if you're not hip and cool, and if you're not up on the latest systems, you're going to fall behind. Yeah. And so when you build a house, and you can, you can, you can brag that you know, we have all of these systems in the house that now they don't have to actually go out and buy it off the, off the market, then it's better for the, for, the, for the builders and for the buyers too. When you're uh, discussing products and you're looking at, at, at all of the new products that are out there, 
are you more excited about lighting or are you more excited about like exterior or building envelope? What are the things that you say, okay, this is where we need to be uh, really looking at, at innovation in t and technology? You know, I, I was having a conversation with, a, with a, a manufacturer yesterday and I was telling him there are some categories that are absolutely boring. There's not much that goes on in those categories. They're very important, but they don't see the churn that say appliances or some of the tech stuff. I mean, those things are constantly changing. But siding and exterior, there's, there's a lot going on there. But roofing, there hasn't been a lot of really new, cool roofing products in a long time. But roofing is a very important part of the house. It's one of the most important parts of a house. So some categories, because by the nature of what they are, you'll see more churn, and in others, you just don't see that I, much. I'm, I'm seeing more uh, building envelope and, and some of these exteriors trying to showcase their products as connecting to other products in the home and becoming total home solutions, total construction solutions. And, and that seems to be working for a lot of those manufacturers that are doing that. Well, certainly you've seen some consolidation in those big companies that have bought up a lot of smaller companies. So now you can go to some companies and you can get roofing, you can get shutters, you can get exterior, you can get stone, you can get vinyl, you can get windows, you can get doors, you can get everything yeah. practically. And so for the builder who wants to just do one-stop shopping, it's perfect. But then there are other companies that they talk to the other brands and they'll say, okay, we have this system. It pairs well with yours. Let's partner up. And so you have that with some faucet manufacturers who are now partnering with companies that produce these systems that monitors the plumbing in your house. So when there's a leak and you're at the ball game, it tells you, hey, you have to go home and check your plumbing right. because something is happening. And so you're seeing a lot of that. So in the next 12 months, what for a builder or a contractor, remodeler, what's the one product category they need to pay attention to to help their business? Oh, wow, that's a tough one. Yeah, and you have 20 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Um, okay, so I think <coughs> appliances is one. They should be paying attention to that. Um, plumbing is not so much. Um, exteriors, yeah. windows. Homeowners, home buyers, they love really cool windows. You have to know what's out there. And how they connect to the overall envelope of the, the home envelope. And, and, and energy efficiency. Correct. Nigel, always a pleasure. Editor-in-chief of Products Magazine and Custom Builder. Thank you. It's good, good to see you and enjoy the rest of the, the couple days here at IBS. Thank you. We're back in just a moment with John Burns, CEO of John Burns Real Estate Consulting on Professional Builders Show Village Live presented by Western Window Systems. to Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Window Systems. I'm your host, Adam Grubb. Happy to be here. And uh, John Burns, a repeat guest. You loved this so much last year. You uh, you called our people and you said, I got to be back on, on the show. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. like that. John, good to see you. You too. Uh, John Burns Real Estate um, Consulting, your your job is is unique. There's there's a, a, a market space that you filled back in 2001. Yeah. It, tell, tell me a little bit more about what you do, but why it's so important for builders, contractors, architects, and the entire industry, what you guys are looking at. I, I, I still think the industry takes too much risk. They were taking too much risk back then, but no, nobody was really monitoring the housing cycle. Nobody had staff. And I said, you know, I'm going to do it, and I'm just going to spend a lot of money doing it and amortize the cost across a whole bunch of people. And that's what we've been doing. And actually... Maybe we've had a little bit of a role in this, but I see the industry navigating themselves through the housing cycle pretty damn well right now. So I, I, we're a lot better than when I started the company. And why do you think that is? I mean, what's, what's changed? Because what's, we, we've gone through 10 years now yeah. since the, a, a ma major catastrophe, really, uh, nationwide in the housing market. Right. It's a 10-year kind of uh, 
reset, if you will. Now there's news, things are starting to slow down, and this or that. Just what are your, what does your gut tell you well, that things are doing right now? So, so when I started the business, there was no information, and we had to go find it and pull it together. Now there's too much information. To right. um, scare people, that information, too much data, too well, many stats, too many opinions? I think it confuses a lot of people, so our job has changed from go find the information to will you filter it for me, please? Yeah. Uh, but I think people are doing a good job filtering it, so I think people really do understand what's going on. Uh, much better than ever before. And I also think there's a new generation of management that didn't exist 15 years ago that is just uh, more cautious and a little bit smarter. What do builders get from you that they can't get somewhere else? Uh, well, I think they can go to conferences and talk to other builders, but you get a lot of group think there. What we, we've got all the, the builders, the building products, the land developers, all the single family rental guys, hedge funds that'll buy a stock on Monday and short it on Tuesday, private equity. And so we got all these diverse people that look at the industry and see different things. Yeah. Uh, and we put them all together in a room three times a year, actually. And we say, let's learn from each other. And I, I think that's what makes us unique. They love, that's what they need. That's what they love. They love that, that interaction, that connection, right. learning from other people, hearing what's working and what's not. Uh, one of the things you guys have been looking at uh, are homeowners and their ability for trade-offs. Uh, yeah. inside the process. What, so what that, do you that's another thing, and it still frustrates the living hell out of me. I mean, we got a long way to go. So talk about taking risk. We're guessing at what people want in a house, nice. just flat out guessing. And I'll, <laughs> I, I won't name names, but I was with an, an architect yesterday who has tens of thousands of consumers living in houses he's built. And I asked him, how many of those consumers have you talked to like after they've lived in the house? And he guessed 20. I mean, right. you know, we're not talking to the customer and finding out what they like and, and don't like and, and the trade-offs that they'll make, which is now the issue is everybody's coming down in price. Well, we think we can sacrifice this in the house. We think we can sacrifice that. We're, we're about getting actual consumers to tell us and show us and giving trade-offs and just making more informed decisions. What's well, the only way a builder can truly drive their own business is if they know what their customers want, what they like, what they don't, yeah. and and how and, and to be the the person giving them suggestions based upon hard data and an understanding of their customer base. That seems elementary. It does. And, and let me give the builders a tip. There's a free resource out there that they don't tap into. The best research is actually done by the building products companies, not the people that are here trying to sell <laughs> the building products. But they have these R and D arms, and they spend millions of dollars a year in consumer research and they don't talk to them. Yeah. And um, at our, we do a conference now that we put all these design-oriented people in a room together. Um, and the guy from Whirlpool last year said, I just realized that um, we spend millions of dollars a year to figure out what the great kitchen is, and we're not talking to the guys that are actually designing right. the kitchen. We're just a hole in the wall that they have to fill. So we're trying to bring them together to be smarter. And that's land, you're, you're bringing people together that like land developers, architects, Builders, contractors, homeowners, the entire group right. of people that are making this that are making the decisions, spending the money, and are responsible for the continuous drive of our market space, and nobody's talking, nobody knows which well, way. They're up. all making decisions in a vacuum. Right. So let's let's collaborate and get together. You're not competing with each other. I mean, like Kohler and Whirlpool don't compete with each other, right? right? But they're trying to figure out what the next great thing is in the kitchen. They should be talking. So instead of the connected home being about technology, you think it should be a connected process from the very beginning with everybody understanding, here's the road we're going down, here's the road that, and, and a true roadmap of here's how we build these homes for efficiency and for homeowner well, happiness. I, I think we've all, everybody's got their own knowledge that if they just would share with each other, we'd all be a hell of a lot smarter. Yeah, I, I agree. And how do, how do they do that with you guys? I mean, uh, you have your three-time a year meetups. Are there other resources that people can go to and can help their business without having to talk to, yes. to you specifically? So we, we have a Design Lens subscription where we're featuring the latest innovations every single month. And we have somebody who manages that. Who, or somebody says, I'm looking for a great farmhouse or I'm looking for something at 12 to the acre. We, we can help them find that. The other thing is that we, uh, we've been doing this for free. We've been going to the big builders and, and saying, we've got 150 questions we want to ask your customers. Will you? push the emails to your interest list right. and we'll tabulate all the results for you. We've been doing this now for about six years. And so now that now we can have some facts behind the decision, should we include this or should we not? Well, you know, the, the millennials are preferring this. 
the older people are more attached to brands, so let, let's tr transition your marketing appropriately. Does it make you mad and, 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 annoyed, <laughs> and annoyed that in, in the world of data and the amount of information at our fingertips that the market, the builder market specifically is not really using data to their advantage? Um, it doesn't make me mad. I, I think it's a huge opportunity. And, and so, uh, and an interesting aside, I was here a couple weeks ago at the CES show. Yeah. There were a thousand exhibitors on smart homes. And frankly, th there was more cool stuff going on in housing here at the CES than there is right now. This, this show is very tactical to me. What can I do this year? You got a new tool. The, um, if you really want to be more forward looking, I would suggest the builders start coming to CES. Yeah. Uh, to see what's coming down the pike. Well, John, it's, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. C continued success in your business. Thanks. And uh, you guys have a lot, of, a lot of great things going on. I appreciate right. the Thanks, time. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate you gave it. It's John Burns, uh, CEO, John Burns Real Estate Consulting. Uh, we want to take this uh, moment to thank one of our sponsors and, and one of our partners here with Inside Show Village, Caesar Stone. Uh, Caesar Stone is the leading manufacturer of premium quartz services. Established in 1987, the company pioneered quartz services utilizing advanced technologies and expertise. Caesar Stone continues to lead the industry with new trends and colors of high quality services consisting of up to 93% quartz. They retain the cool tactile qualities of nature's strongest stones with enormous applications, possibilities that go beyond the surface, including kitchen countertops, vanities, wall paneling, furniture, and more. Visit CaesarStoneUS.com for more information. Thanks to Caesar Stone for their sponsorship. Show Village Live continues now. We are talking with the CEO, Esther DeWold from Phantom Screens. Esther, a pleasure. Thank, Thank you very you. much for taking time. I know you're very busy for coming on the show, but more importantly for being part of Show Village, being part of our brands. And Phantom Screens, you guys, I, I don't want to jinx it, but you guys are doing incredible things and you're right now at the top of your game when it comes to your product, but also expanding the space for homeowners in very, very cool ways. You're part of the New American Home. Mm -hmm. Tell me what the phantom screen secret is right now and what's, what's going on with your company. Well, I mean, as a company, the secret's always your people, right? Yeah. And uh, we have an incredible team and everyone's passionate about bringing the outdoors, the best of the outdoors in. And that's our mission, to uh, make life better for everyone when it comes in contact with our screens. So we're having a lot of fun with it. So there have been two major topics over the last day and a half of our shows. Number one is the uh, labor shortage. Number two is how to expand the space for cool outdoor living. So you're on the good, you're on the good side of those, of those topics. Yeah, we are, but hey, we're uh, not miracle workers. Labor shortage is an issue for us too, because uh, good people are hard to find, right. but once you got them, keep them. Uh, but as far as outdoor entertaining areas and making the backyard part of life, in your home as well, you're absolutely right. It is all the rage and it we're is. taking part in it. And it's not just for uh, Florida, Vegas, LA, Orange County, it, anywhere in the country, absolutely. you can expand your space at least three seasons of the year, in some areas, all four. What are some of the yep. products you guys have going on right now that somebody would be, that you think somebody would be wowed by in, in middle America? Well, I think it's exactly what you said. It's the back porch that usually gets closed for winter where you stack all your patio yep. furniture and the barbecue goes in the corner and now you can actually keep it out there so with our product with the retractable uh, vinyl screens that come down so you can have screens that have two different types of materials in them the vinyl for let's say winter and then insect mesh or more of a solar material in summertime and that back room then can become an all-season room with the vinyl keeping out the cold because you can keep uh, heat on inside, it traps the heat in, and the best part is no snow, no snow blows in, no leaves blow in, it keeps your furniture clean, and it really just becomes another room of the house all and that's, year round. It's and that's, perfect. that's the, the number one sentence, it's another room in a house. It's mm. truly expanding the way that you live. And if you have kids, you're, you're, you entertain, you have neighbors, yep. people want to, their, their house to be the, the center of attention in a lot of different ways, yep. and your product allows that to happen but it also has practical applications as well. What, what are some of the things that people might be surprised that Phantom, the Phantom Screen specifically can give a homeowner or a builder when it comes to your product space? I think uh, the, what the builders love is the energy efficiency. And I think that's the surprise for the homeowners is the fact that many of our products will retain um, the cool inside in summertime uh, our products will create seven times more efficiency just because 
you're trapping the heat on the outside, not letting it come in and then blocking it by blinds. And so I think the exterior rated roller shade systems of the past, uh, they were always interior, sorry, and now they're becoming exterior and we're leading the market on having the best and finest exterior retractables for outside. And that, from an energy efficiency point of view, is a wow. And for homeowners, as I said earlier, about keeping their spaces clean. Yeah. Yeah, you're keeping bugs out or you're keeping the sun out or what have you, you're protecting your furniture, but then you have also this dust protection and debris protection. Well, you guys also have applications for many openings, mm -hmm. many, many doorways, spans to 12, 13 feet, cool things, and you're also inventing and wanting to do next generation yeah. things yeah. Uh, for that space. That's got to make you excited as you see the company continue to expand oh. and grow. Oh, totally. So. Uh, we're taking a page out of the book of Europe. They are the shade experts. And so that's our latest product where we've been able to launch a new cable guided system. So traditionally we've been very um, much insect protection. Right. So four sides closed running in tracks. So now our new product is running on cables and it's purely for solar shading purposes. And why I say out of Europe is they know how to do it. They, yeah. they block the heat from the outside, not the inside. And so we're real excited about getting North America to take that on by storm and understand that kind of savings in energy efficiency. Now are, those, are those ideas coming from builders as well? Are they saying, hey, here's what homeowners are wanting? Or you guys have your own research and your own team out there trying to figure out what's next? I'd love to take all the credit, but we can't. <laughs> a lot of it comes from our consumers, right? right? I mean, they're the ones that tell us what they need, what they want. And yeah, there's a little bit of, you know, we try to play Apple. Yeah. We'll tell you what you need, <laughs> uh, definitely. But yeah, a bit of both. Well, it's, it's exciting. You guys have a great product. It's, you're an awesome company. Your people are amazing to work with. Thanks for your partnership. Thanks for being a part of uh, Show Village here. Continued yeah. success at Phantom Screens. Thank you. You C too. CEO Esther DeWold on uh, Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Windows Systems. Back in a moment, here with Rachel Brown Matthews, builder from Alabama. She's got some great stuff to roll up next on Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Windows Systems. Back in a moment. Every project is a journey. Along the way, we meet the people who become family. These relationships not only impact our lives, but the success of our businesses. Together, our legacy is to build the next generation of homes. Build your legacy. Yes. Builders Show Builders Live, presented by Western Window Systems, here at the International Builders Show in Las Vegas, and I'm with Rachel Brown Matthews. You are you, Rachel. We've known each other for a little a little while here. That's right. Uh, and this is our first time in, in an interview uh, capacity, and you are super nervous. You said to me right before how nervous you were. Oh no, it's it's because it's 25 degrees out here. That's why. <laughs> I, I, I knew something was 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 different. All right, so uh, your story is very unique. So you've been in the building industry for many many years, uh, family industry. Uh, and you've grown up as a builder, and now you are a builder. Tell me your story. Well, I'm 50 years old. I think I look pretty good for 50. Yes. Now, I, I was born and raised in Huntsville. My father was a home builder and a developer. Um, he actually, he, he started as an auctioneer, but I grew up with a small family business, so I've been exposed to it um, all of my life, and I love it. I'm very passionate about it. So I'm custom building now. And, and it's, your company's doing very well, but you're custom building because you are looking at the, your market space and homeowners' expectations of what a builder should be. You guys do some things different. That's right. Um, you know the statement, to know you is to love you, right? So that's kind of how I feel about my customer base. I really, uh, I'm driven to develop a relationship with the customers. And in order to do that, my company and I, we really focus on two aspects. One, learning what the customer's love language is. Right. Are you familiar with yeah. the five love yeah, languages? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, maybe your spouse yeah. forced you to learn it. Yes, obviously, <laughs> obviously. So uh, we, we get to know our customer's love language, right. and if you know a customer's love language, um, you can meet their needs in the build. So that's one thing that we do. Uh, the other thing is, are you familiar with the DISC personality? Yeah. 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 Okay. So you're in marketing and advertising, most likely. Uh, you're probably an I, maybe. Um, I have absolutely no idea. Yeah. I don't think we have time to go through it here. No. Right now. But uh, right. I, I, 
I, I appreciate the effort. Uh, so you, you do these tests for your company or for your, for your customers? Well, all of the above. Uh, I test everybody in my company so that we can make sure we work together. But also, if you know how your customer thinks and you know what's important to them, right. it's going to make the, the construction of their home uh, a lot smoother. They'll be happier. So you, the customer experience um, and, and homeowner experience, does that go past the build? Are you going back to them to continue? Because referrals, I'm sure, are, are huge for you in, in, right. in Alabama. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that other homeowners are, are seeing the homes that you guys are building and saying, what was that experience like? Because the, the home build process is never uh, sm as smooth as you want it to be. But they always ask, what was the process like? Oh, she was great to work with. Hey, they did a good job. That's what, right. what are you wanting people to say about, about you as a builder? Well, I want them to, to be, I mean, on average, we work with a customer for a year, and that's from the design phase all the way to the finish of the construction of the home. And so what I want people to say about our company is that we, we really gave them the attention that they wanted and needed. Yeah. When you work with someone for that long, they want to feel important. They don't want to feel like you're just, um, just a bottom line builder. So. What are some of the unique things you guys do, customizations you do as a builder, that somebody might be surprised by as a custom builder, hey, this is, what, this is the way we do things, and this is what's worked for us in the past. Oh, sure, in terms of uh, working with the customer or in the or just home, in the actual the home, yeah, design, okay. uh, interior finishes, things like that. Sure, so as you know, um, the animal industry is like a billion dollar industry. People love their pets, so we really, really focus on uh, building homes that accommodate uh, your needs for your pets. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So we take advantage of a lot of under the stairs storage areas yeah. to, to house your pets. Um, you can use a pot filler to, to fill up uh, their bowls with mm -hmm. water. So we focus on pets. Pets are important to, to our customers. Um, we also focus on the efficiency of how you live in your home. So we want to shave time off. We're all busy now. Yeah. And so uh, one way that we incorporate that is with Alexa, obviously. She, she makes a big show yeah. in my home. She tries to show me up, uh, well, but, and she does a good job. I'm sure she does. <laughs> Positive she does. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the customer experience in, inside the, the sales uh, center and, and mm -hmm. what, they, what they get when they're talking with one of your representatives, and I'm sure they work with you probably hand in hand. You're right. a big part of that process. True. You're not just uh, signing the contract and then, and then going off. You're, you are a builder. <clears throat> uh, so tell me what is exciting about working with a homeowner and seeing that end result be, be their home that they're going to live in hopefully for their life. I just, I think it's very remarkable that you can start with dirt and grass yeah. and through a, a process that should be fun and not so stressful, you work together to implement all the designs that they've always dreamed of and at the end of the day they have a home that's come from dirt and I, I, that, I love that, I love that part, creating yeah. something from nothing. Are you, are you hoping that your story and, and are, you, are you doing anything locally I guess to help other uh, women? to help other uh, young people go through uh, a, a trade school and, and a craftsmanship and be, become a, a CEO and a, and a business owner like you? Is that important for you in, in your local, local area? Sure, absolutely. I think both men and women have a lot to contribute in the construction industry. And if we work together, um, you know, we're having labor shortage yeah. issues right now and women are definitely relevant to uh, to the home building process and they have a lot to contribute just like the men. So, absolutely. Well, you guys have had a very successful, uh, I know, the last several years, and I'm sure <clears throat> continued success. Uh, you, you have great, great people, great, yeah. great products there, too, and a, and a great home. Uh, so continued success. Are you an A or are you an, uh, an I? No, I'm a strong D. Right. Shock of the year. <laughs> uh, Rachel Brown Matthews, thank you very much. Adam, thank it was, you it very was much. a joy to talk to you and to see sure. you again. Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Window Systems. We're back in just a moment with our friends from Versatex. We'll back after this break on Show Village Live. My name is Rick Salter. I live in Las Vegas. I'm a builder, I'm a homeowner, and I'm a Western Window Systems dealer. I built this house because I felt I needed a place to bring clients to see the products in a finished environment. We tried to put some of everything that Western produces into the house, 
The client has the ability to not only envision what they'd look like in their own house, but to be able to operate the products, to be able to slide them, to be able to close them, lock them. When people see the size of the doors in the show house and see how easy they operate, they're always amazed by that. One of the things that architects find the most unique about the product, the way that you can integrate a fixed window into a sliding door or a fixed window into a swinging door, all the profiles being of the same width, that they all interlock into each other just makes the product incredibly versatile. One of the things that we did in this house that's really unique is that we took a bifolding door system, put it on top of a bar, brought a sliding door into it, and created the ability to be able to open both of those elements and all that's left is the bar. People find that it's just very refreshing to be able to open a glass wall, be able to take their drink out onto a deck and enjoy their home. It's just an overall feeling that you can take a wall and open it and the whole outside becomes part of the inside. The Western product utilizes a thermally broken frame. It utilizes the best low E glass and that's the only way that you could achieve the values necessary to meet the new energy codes. I don't think there's any product on the market that I would even attempt to do what we did here at this house with anything other than Western. Welcome back to Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Window Systems. I'm your host, Adam Grubb. Good afternoon in the east, good morning in the west. Uh, we are sitting here now with Versatex, uh, John Pace and Wade uh, Paquin. You guys uh, from Versatex, you, your product has changed considerably over the last five to ten years. Tell me wh what the market is, is asking for, what homeowners are asking for when it comes to, to Versatex. Well, I think from the standpoint of the uh, market is asking for, they're asking for products that can make the life of the contractor and builder easier. Uh, simpler, you know, craftsmen are not as uh, plentiful as they used to be. Uh, I think that's very important. As far as the homeowner, they're looking for quality aesthetics, they're looking for some very real value in the product, but also longevity and performance. Uh, so we've come out with some products that really tackle those two areas. And we'll, and we'll get into those in just a second. Uh, Wade, he, he, John alluded to the uh, skills gap and, and, and the labor, labor shortage. It's topic number one. Last year, topic number one. This year, uh, are you guys doing things right now from a product and a manufacturing perspective to help? Uh, what we're seeing in Rhode Island is um, you know, the, the gap. We're seeing about um, like 40% of the construction labor force in Rhode Island is baby boomers. So they're getting ready to gear up uh, to basically retire, exit the industry in the next decade or so. Um, so what I've st been doing and what I'm passionate about is um, trying to inspire the younger tradesmen and, and women. So I've joined an advisory board at our local uh, vocational and tech school to try and get those kids interested in a path in the construction industry. Now you guys have an interesting partnership and, and relationship from a, a manufacturer and a, and a builder. What, what's the most important thing from a communication that a manufacturer needs from a builder or a contractor to help you guys put the right products in, in place? What we like is communication of what they see, not just in our product, how we can improve our product, how we can innovate the product, uh, and we need to listen to the contractor and builder. From the start of our company, one thing we did, uh, whether it be a JLC show or someone else, is listen to what their needs were, what was the pain they were having in the field, and how we could correct that pain by creating new and innovative products. And, and that's really what we're all about, is, is something different uh, than what you can find in the marketplace today. So are you involved in, in getting people in Rhode Island and your local area involved in trade schools, in, uh, in other craftsman programs, going into the school systems, getting people, getting young kids excited about construction, working with products and manufacturers? Uh, that's exactly what we're doing. So part of that program with the uh, school is um, the co-op program. So when a student gets done with their junior year, they're eligible to go into co-op so we can bring them on full time for that summer and then their senior year they can work two weeks on and two weeks off and we have a chance to groom them and get them excited about being in construction so when they graduate ultimately we want to employ them. So you wanted to have him on this interview because it was important that, that people see a manufacturer 
and a contractor and a builder talking, connecting, working together to solve a problem that isn't just, let's make a better product to make a better margin to make a better home. You're trying to make a better future for the home building industry. Correct. I think there's a stigma out there that people, you know, families, parents, look at the trade associations being something bad. They got to go to college. I just don't think that's the case. I think there's an entrepreneurial path through the contracting, through going to a trade school, working with a company, then eventually becoming your own boss, starting your own company. So I think it's important. And Versatech, what we're trying to do is engage with those the, uh, con the, uh, excuse me, the technical trade schools in order to teach them and educate them on like building products, especially trim products, and the auxiliary products that go with it. What's the best paints, fasteners, sealants uh, that can help put the whole package together for them? And that helps your industry down the road. You're doing, you're yes. doing this for the future. You're doing this for the future of home building and construction so that uh, kids that you're talking to can come up into a space that is still viable and necessary. I know we're not building more land, but there's still plenty out there, and there's still going to be a, a drastic need in the next 30, 40 years for homes and for development. And somebody like yourself, understanding that you are part of that solution and working with a manufacturer outside of just buying his product, that's got to make you feel great, right? It does, especially with what John's doing. I mean, the innovation um, coming out of Versatech is unbelievable. Yeah. So the plan for younger people, uh, men, women, uh, girls specifically maybe in, in, in high school, getting them excited. And uh, we just had Rachel Brown Matthews here who is a, is, is a builder. She's been in the industry since she was seven years old. That, those kind of stories are out there, but we need more of them. How, how, do, we, how do we do that? How do we get more kids uh, and, and, and women involved in this space and get them excited to show them, hey, you can be a business owner, you can make a lot of money, and you can be in control of your own destiny. I think it starts with educating um, from the parents um, about this potential pathway and career. Um, you know, and the schools that are pushing kids to go into two and four year um, colleges. You know, it's not necessarily the right path, it's not the wrong path, but there is another path, and that's the message we're trying to get out there. Yeah. We do it through high schools. We think that's the best path. You've got to get, there actually has to be almost a course or something in, in a high school that shows them there's another path other than just uh, going to college, and spending you know hundreds of thousands of dollars and having debt for the next 10 to 15 years like I did yeah. versus going to some like most like most, most mm -hmm. going to a trade association and and really if I hadn't been doing what I'm doing today I'd been going to trade path yeah. cuz I think it's great yeah well John Wade continued success guys I'm glad that uh, a partnership and, a, and a, a connection has been formed here between you guys and and I, I hope that everything that we all want to happen in this space happens and uh, just conti continued success out there and working on the product. Well, thanks, Adam. John, very nice. Thank you, Wade, Adam. Thank, thank you very much. For, for, appreciate your time. Professional Builders Show Village Live continues, presented by Western Window Systems. A thanks to our sponsor from Green Sky. Green Sky is a leading technology company for powering commerce at the point of sale for growing ecosystems of merchant, consumers, and banks. Our highly scalable proprietary technology platform enables over 14,000 merchants to offer frictionless promotional payment options to consumers, driving increased sales volume and accelerated cash flow. Banks leverage Green Sky's technology to provide loans to super prime and prime consumers nationwide. Since our inception, approximately 2.1 million consumers have financed over $15 billion of commerce using, our, using their paperless, real-time apply and buy technology. Green Sky and Atlanta, Georgia, greensky.com. For more information, thank you so much to Green Sky for their continued sponsorship of Professional Builders Show Village. Show Village Lives continues now. My favorites. <laughs> He my, says that to everyone. I do. No, it's on. You have no, to say that. I don't, Gene. You it's on. It's on tape. I, I don't say it every time. Uh, Gene Meyer, CEO of Thrive I'm really Home Builders. Really glad to see you. Adam. Good to see you really too. Really good to see you. you Thank you, a good Stephen. Show? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, the good. shows shows have been great so far. Appreciate it. Uh, you you guys, uh, professional builder builder of the year uh, last year. Uh, this year, you're uh, you had to give up that that crown, but that doesn't mean you guys still aren't builders of the year for for a lot of uh, people. You guys have done things in the market space that are really revolutionizing the way other builders build. Tell me some of the things that in the last, I don't know, year to two years that you are most proud of, Gene, uh, as the CEO and, uh, and owner of your, of your home building company. Well, you know, we, we did a project called Panacea that uh, I really thought would be a brand builder for us, and it has been. So I'm proud of that. But what has been a little bit of a surprise to me is that our affordable townhomes have carried uh, some national awards. We got best in green yesterday good, for good our for affordable townhomes. Yeah. And uh, we got a grand award for housing innovation from DOE for that. 
So that's been, uh, it was a bit of a sleeper, yeah. but really happy because uh, we need to be delivering high performance homes to people uh, of low income who need that most. They need houses that help pay for themselves. Stephen, that's, that's been your mantra as, as a company. You're solving problems that some builders don't even know are there. You guys are, you, you live in an area where there's so much diversity in the types of construction happening. What is your favorite thing and most exciting thing that's happened in, over the last year that you're proud of for, with Thrive Home Builders? I think um, from a design perspective, one of the fun things for us has been kind of to come back to simplicity a little bit. Um, I think it's been one of the maybe a little bit of drawbacks of the contemporary styles that we see a lot of. And that brings a lot of material types, a lot of uh, material transitions, flashing, that sort of thing. And at the end of the day, it ends up driving cost. And us coming back, we've started looking back at the product to be simplified and, and yet still be beautiful. Right. And what a great opportunity that is because we can still do all the really high performance things that we do. And yet you can convey it in a simpler, more beautiful package and one that uh, hopefully helps you address some of that affordability concern right. that's really present. I know it's present for everybody's market, but Denver, we've really felt it acutely. Yeah, well, uh, we, we had uh, Rob Dietz from uh, NAHB, the ch chief economist on yesterday, and he was talking about the different pockets of cities that uh, affordable housing is still uh, available and viable. And that's where he sees a lot of the growth markets is because it's in areas of the country that are not oversaturated, number one, and number two, the, the cost of living there is, is set for affordable housing. Are you guys seeing that in, in the Colorado area? Are there still areas that you, that you can build in where people with, with a lower income than, than some can get a home? Well, you know, we're, what are you doing if not? We're building in Stapleton, which is a, a high-end neighborhood, really, uh, in partnership with the developer that's providing the, the subsidy, the gap that we need to deliver affordable housing. But I think what's on a lot of people's minds is what people are referring to as the missing middle. It's people that uh, make too much money to really uh, qualify for some of the affordable housing programs, but they're still priced out of the market. So that's where what Stephen was talking about is uh, we think has great potential. Uh, simple, constructible, affordable, beautiful, high performance. And it's a bigger challenge for us, it's self-inflicted, because it costs more to build a high-performance yeah. home. Uh, and yet we believe that uh, through those strategies that we can pull the cost down. I've seen some statistics in our market where millennials are making up between 50 and 60% of the resale market. They can't afford the new homes that are being built in Denver, and so there's a, a tremendous market opportunity there uh, if we can succeed. Uh, the next five, ten years, what's the most important thing for you, Stephen, as a home builder looking out, not just in the Denver market, but just in general, what does, what, what is you, what are you most excited about? What are you most worried about in the next five to ten years of, of home building? I think the, for me, the excitement and the worry is that it's, it's two sides of the same coin, which is that we, as a home building industry, I think everyone recognizes that we're going to have to get a whole lot better at what we do. Right. So just uh, yesterday, I was at a lunch where they talked about uh, this is one of the only industries where there really hasn't been a productivity gain in the labor force in the last uh, several decades. So I think we all know it. We've been talking about it for, for decades, uh, exactly how we're going to solve it. I think there's a lot of ways for us to solve it, but I think it's going to have to start with the notion that we're just going to have to get better. We're going to have to become more efficient. We're going to have to uh, drag ourselves in some sense into the 21st century right. and right. do a lot of the things that we see a lot of other industries do. And maybe it's time for some of the excuses about how different our industry is. Maybe some of those have to start going away and we have to accept kind of the new reality that the market needs us to be more efficient so that we can deliver more cost effectively. And you guys really need to be driving decisions and changes with manufacturers and educating the homeowner on the things that are most important to support the manufacturers that you're that you're supporting. That's a tall order, Gene. It is. It's a. Uh, we're we're trying to get a virtuous cycle going yeah. here with an educated consumer. There's demand for products that manufacturers can then provide, uh, and it's not an easy overnight thing. Uh, we're sort of an overnight success. It took 26 years, yeah. and. Uh, but I think we're well positioned to do it. We have some great industry partnerships. And 
That's important uh, to your growth and has been for many, many years. And as a, small builder, right? as a small builder, uh, there are market resources, there are uh, uh, research and development resources, product development uh, opportunities, and all of those things have really uh, helped us. I feel really blessed as a small builder to have been able to partner with such incredible uh, manufacturers. Yeah, and you've got a, a great staff, you've got a great company, great company culture. Um, you, you guys are, are always the first to say yes when, uh, when people need something. You're also the first to partner with people and, and take some chances. You talked about taking risk. You guys practice what you preach and, and you just have a great, a great company and, and we're happy to see the success and, and continued success with Thrive Home Builders, Gene. Thanks, Adam. Thank you very much. It's Steven. always good to see you. Oh, it's good you. to see so you guys, much. too. I hope, hope we can catch up later, all right? Absolutely. Thanks for being on the program. You bet. We're back in a moment here on Professional Builders Show Builders Live, presented by Western Window Systems. We'll see you in just a second. Hard work got us here. Home building is our legacy. And from generation to generation, that legacy is past. Come, build your legacy. Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Window Systems at the International Builder Show here on the steps of one of our homes inside Show Village at, uh, in Vegas. We build homes uh, off-site, we bring them here into the parking lot, we construct them, uh, and people go through them through the entire week here at IBS. We are marrying ma manufacturers and builders together here at the show, and that's what this Show Village Live is about. It's about showcasing architects, designers, uh, manufacturers, and how they connect. And there's nobody more connected than uh -huh. Will Duderstadt. Vice President of Marketing for, uh, for MI Homes. Will, That's good, right. good to see you. Thank you, sir. You are connected, right? A little bit, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. So we're going to have a different conversation, okay? okay. So we, we just talked with Thrive Home Builders, who, who are one of my favorite builders. Amazing uh, Right, guys. they're amazing. Yes, they're an amazing family, amazing guys. And uh, Rachel Brown Matthews, before, before that, a, uh, a smaller custom builder in the middle of Alabama. Love her work. Right? It's amazing. Uh, and she's been in the business uh, for 25 years or so. That, all of those people, and now... MI Homes. Right. So you have a custom builder, you have a, a, a mid-range builder in Denver, and now MI. I want to have a different conversation sure. with you about how you guys go to market, how you utilize digital marketing, social media, things to drive volume, but the right volume. Right, right. right. You're a production builder. We are. What does that mean to, to some, and what does it mean to, to you? You know, as a production builder, I think we all know what that means, right? You have those checklists that you kind of follow. But we also have production marketing, which means we constantly need to think, okay, this new platform that we want to use, how do we scale that? How do we apply that to 200 or 300 communities? And I feel like that really allows us to get really, really good at repeating some of these things, changing out the community and the content and the style of home underneath. But we do a lot on social, getting people just really, really excited about those early stages of a community. You know, there's a lot of people that shy away from, you know, looking at a, a construction site, right? Bulldozers moving around, but that's mundane to us in the business. That's actually pretty darn exciting. It's the beginning. It is the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah. And from nothing comes something. Right. So by embracing that and building a little bit of a formula, we're able to leverage, you know, drone photography and a little bit of time lapse and, and really build some hype and some excitement for those brand new communities. 30, 60, 90 days before we even launch them. Now, smaller builders, custom builders, remodelers, uh, they're gonna tell you and say to you, well, yeah, you're in my homes, you've sure. got all this money, of course you have drones. Drones are 500 bucks. Right. Like, go buy a drone. Right. If you're a smaller builder, you can do Instagram, you can do these things, and if you have a strategic approach, you can learn something from bigger builders, but really, you're, not, you're doing the same thing if you guys build five homes a year or a thousand, right? Absolutely, you're always dividing it by the number of homes that you're trying to market or the communities you're trying to market. So it's those same tactics, yeah. just at a different scale. The, uh, content marketing, as, yeah. a, as a builder, uh, that's the last thing most think about is, right. okay, uh, I have to go build this house, I have to deal with this homeowner, mm -hmm. I have to pay this bill, uh, oh, oh, by the way, I have to write a blog. Right. Right. That doesn't happen. Yeah, and, doesn't. and they typically put it off. But you're saying, look, if you want to grow your business, you want to grow as a builder, 
content marketing in a traditional and in a next level sense Absolutely. is vital, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yes. I'll give you a great example. We worked on this project that I was really enthusiastic about. We, we partnered with a, a food blogger that was local to one of our communities. We gave her access to our kitchen. It's a glamorous, awesome kitchen. And she put together a recipe, baked some cookies, and published it to her blog, sponsored by us, with just a real nice mention at the end that, you know, the kitchen is courtesy of MI. And the headline on this was, cookies that are perfect to bring your new neighbors. So when you talk about right. content marketing, right. you know, that, something that simple, from the builder's perspective, that was just access. That was low cost, low, low time to be able to generate a really great piece of content. And that's a moment. That's a moment for a homeowner. That's a moment for a potential homeowner. That, those stories, if there are more of those things, right. you would see more and more people understanding that marketing doesn't have to be as difficult as people make it. Right. Now, finding those people and, then, and, and making sure that you then do something with it afterwards, that's a, that's a staff issue, that's a, right? Yep, that, that's, you gotta put some brain power behind right. that. How are you gonna repurpose that content? What role does it play in the overall journey as to when you want someone to consume that piece of content? Clearly that one's not conversion yeah. oriented, right? right? We're not gonna generate leads off of that, but it certainly helps pre-sales and it helps post-sales as well because it builds, it builds some emotional kind of uh, empathy between us and our customers. You guys have different strategies for the different uh, segments. So you're yeah. a millennial, you're a baby boomer, you're, you're uh, aging in place. Right. You guys build for, for every, every market space. We do. So you have different stri strategic alliances and content marketing strategies for each one of those? We do, but to say that sounds really daunting right, that's what I'm and, saying. and difficult. That's, that's my next it's, question. How, do, how the hell do you do that? It's the same process. You're just changing the medium that you might want to communicate it. You know, you're probably not going to go to Snapchat to talk to baby boomers right. or those people that are downsizing, but how you craft a piece of content, how you brainstorm with your team, and how you actually write that, that's all the same. Yeah. So you just end up distributing it in a different place. Maybe your KPIs are adjusted along the way. Maybe you're looking for shares versus likes or, or just raw reads of a particular article. But that's, that's in the weeds, right? right. And, you, and you have a, a smaller custom builder and he just heard the word KPI and, and he or yeah. she said, what, <laughs> what's happening here? You said this was easy. Yeah. Uh, so start small, right? Sure. It, just right. start, where would you, what would you say to a, a builder out there that said, hey, I need to, I need to start developing some content. Yeah. I need to be on social media. I need to do something. What do I do? Right. Do they just picture, show pictures of their house with a description of what it is? Right. So think about your own like social news feed right now, right? You log on to Facebook and it's, it's just this endless scroll of right. all sorts of stuff. A builder needs to have some sort of emotion in their content that makes everybody stop and look at that post. Yeah. And if it's just more exteriors or, or the standard three quarter view, that's not gonna do it, yeah. right? Yeah. For, for KPIs, key performance indicators, right? Uh, all, I'm, all I'm arguing for there is set a goal before you start. Right. Identify what you want to accomplish. And set, set maybe a lofty goal, then yeah. maybe set a small, hey, I want 100 new followers right. by the end of the quarter, right? right. What Absolutely. does that look like? Yeah, okay. aim for something, and yeah. then you can always revise it. And there, this is hard, but it's not impossible, and you say start small, maybe learn, maybe learn from your kids. That's right. Your kids yes. are going to tell you yes. how, how this stuff works yes. anyway. So uh, You know, the other thing on that front, people feel the need to sign up for all these different right. platforms yeah. and all these different mediums. Uh, just do one and get really good at that one. I hope it's the one where your customers right, are, right? right? That's kind of key. But don't try and do a second or a third until you feel yeah. really confident Just start about small, one. figure yeah. it out, and then, and then build from there. Will right. Duderstadt, VP of Digital hey, Marketing for you. MI Homes. Will, it was a pleasure. Absolutely. It's great to talk to you. Where can, uh, I'm going to give you the plug. Absolutely. Okay, okay. So tell them where to find your stuff because uh, you have a pretty popular and interesting uh, Instagram feed. What to, to I, I love traveling around to all of our communities and divisions, so I often Instagram from our model homes. Yep. It's just Will Duder. Uh, you can certainly visit MI online at mihomes.com, and I was blessed with a very SEO-friendly name, so yeah. people can find me. <laughs> Quickly. Yes, so yes thanks, indeed. Thanks, Will. Thank We're you. back in a moment here at Professional Builders Show Builders Live, presented by Western Windows Systems. We are with Rich Bensaka here, editor of Professional Builder Magazine, in just a second. Thanks for watching. Back in a second.
Welcome back to Professional Builder Show Builders Live. I'm your host, Adam Grubb, presented by Western Window Systems, Rich Ben Saka from uh, Professional Builder Magazine. Rich, how well, are you, sir? I'm great. How are you? Good to see you. I'm great. Uh, cold, but I'm, I'm fine. So uh, you're the last guest here of this hour, and you have, you have to do a great job. You know why? Why? Because this hour has been killer with, with our guests, with the content, and the number one and two things that I heard was innovation and labor shortage. Okay? Now, as a, uh editor and writer and journalist for Professional Builder, you obviously have been writing and talking and covering this stuff for, for many, many years, but specifically lately, as a journalist, what are you most excited about covering right now in the building space and the market space? I think for us, uh, and hopefully for our readers, it's it's product innovation, it's, it's integrating technology across the board, um, and, and in a way that allows builders to see where technology is, adv is advantageous to them. Right. So I'm not advocating, and I would never advocate uh, a builder to say, uh, you know, I need to, I, it's all or nothing. What's my pinch point? What can help me solve it? And I think you're seeing uh, a lot of innovation and technology available to them that maybe they don't know yeah. will solve their pinch point. So I want to bring that, I want to bring that together. I want to say, this is a builder's problem. Here's a technology or innovative solution that you should try. And I think that a lot of builders are open to that. They just don't know that it's available. But you're, you're the first in influencer before influencers were influencers, right? <laughs> I, I mean, guess, that's, yeah. that's what we do. That's right. what the magazine does. That's what our brand does. And that's what you do specifically. Let's talk about data for a second. So we, we had uh, uh, John Burns on earlier, and he was talking about the data that's available and that builders who can use it uh, but don't should but won't. Uh, I mean, it was, it, it, he was truly uh, understanding of builders' reluctancy to utilize data for their benefit. Yeah. What are you seeing and how, how can we change that? Well, I, I, I concur with John. I mean, obviously John's a researcher. He knows, uh, he knows that market really well. And I, there is a lot of data out there. I think that the way to change it is to uh, let builders know that they've got a lot of data, first of all, in-house. Right. They don't need, to, don't go out and try to find data. Don't go out and try to build a wish list before you know what you need data for and what data you have in-house. Yeah. So uh, we talk about this in an article um, that I've got coming out called The Data-Driven Builder. And it's not about, again, comprehensively applying data. It's looking at, um, where's my pinch point? Trade relations, uh, cost cutting at the front end, land development or land planning. Um, there are there is data in house and there's data you know that you can go get after you figure out what you've got and how to use it. Um, so I think it's really incremental. I think that the lesson is look at the data that you have and then and then what kind of issues are you trying to solve and, and, and look for the data that you have that's going to help solve that. What's the uh, the builder's role in the smart home? So this is this has been and, and I don't know what your definition is of smart home. Others have have many right. There's connected home, right. smart home, uh, healthy home. Uh, what, what is the builder's role in helping the education process, uh, connecting all that together, and just making that a legitimate reason to purchase a home and build a home with them? Well, I think, I think simply the builder's role is to provide the, the best infrastructure for a connected home experience. Yeah. Because to try to guess at what consumers want and are going to are going to what's going to resonate with them, and, and to trade your salespeople to articulate that. Um, we see a lot of builders, not a lot. We see we see the leading builders in this space packaging things that they know that that resonate with consumers. So uh, you know, locks, lights, um, uh, you know, garage door openers that that work off an app. Um, but that's a real basic package. But really, stepping back, you know, the builder is the is is has the opportunity to develop an infrastructure that enables a strong Wi-Fi signal through the house, um, enables them to future-proof in a way to kind of add on what they want. We yeah. know that most consumers buy smart home products as an aftermarket buy. Um, it's not, they don't expect it through their builder. They don't expect their no. builder to provide it. So they're, and they also don't have the budget. So as they get budget, as they get interest, as they get need for smart connected products, or they, maybe it's just a passion, maybe it's actual, a, a real need, they'll go out and buy it. So if the builder has put in the right infrastructure, they can just plug and play. Yeah. And, and they don't have to be, it's agnostic to a voice assistance, it's agnostic to a control, um, it's agnostic to, a, to an app, it's just, Go out and get what you need. We've got the infrastructure for you that's going to enable you to do that on your time and your budget and your interest. Do you think smart homes and the automated uh, homes are the f new flashy thing? Or do you think this is where, this is how people live and will live in the, in the future? 
I think it's a bit of both. I think there's a generation, certainly, that, that is tech savvy, that wants the convenience and the, uh, the ease of use of, of what smart home or smart home products or connected products can provide. But I think there's also issues. There's issues of privacy. Um, there's issues of uh, interoperability. Mm. So will this work with that? Right. Um, and also uh, issues with what do you do when it breaks? What do you do when it breaks down? Who do I call? Do I call my builder? Well, the builder doesn't, doesn't know anything. He's not, gonna, he's not gonna take that call. So now you've got a bunch of different uh, device manufacturers that you gotta get to to kind of make that happen. They don't upgrade at the same time or, or update at the same time. So there's, there's definite hurdles there. I think that um, if you ask me this in 15 to 20 years, when we're sitting down here in, in wherever we are in 15 right. to 20 years, I'm gonna have a different answer because I think it's gonna be much more pervasive. Yeah. But I think it's gonna be, it has to mature to the point where it becomes easy for everybody to integrate that into their home uh, or it's a default into their home, right. not this piecemeal what we've seen now. Yeah. There, there's a, a sense right now in the market that things are uh, really great so they, they've got to suck here pretty soon. <laughs> I, I don't think there's any other way to put it. Uh, I, uh, you could talk to any, any uh, economist, any, any lobbyist, anybody from NHB, Nary from the KBA, they're all saying the same thing, everybody just calm down. Like, we're good, this is, it's okay to be good. Yeah. What are you seeing and what are you hearing? Uh, I'm seeing some of the same things. I, I think that it's, it's a real fun narrative to say things are great, but they're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna hit a downslide right. in, in this year or next year. I think what's gonna drive that from what I've, from what I've read and, and the people I've talked to is really interest rates. So if interest rates start to creep up, that's going to slow the economy. It's going to slow housing. Yeah. Um, if if they're if they're measured in that, if they recognize the impact on housing specifically, then hopefully they won't be as aggressive with interest rates going forward. Um, well, we have Jim Tobin on, uh, chief lobbyist for NAHB, uh, next hour, and that's one of the things that his group religiously works on uh, is to ensure that the government entities understand, hey, when you do this this happens and then that happens, yeah, there's, so keep it tight. Yeah, there's a ripple effect, no doubt. And I think the other thing is that I don't think things are great. I think, you know, I'm, I'm all for kind of steady measured growth. Right. I, don't, I don't like to spike, I don't like to see these cycles where we get to two or two and a half million homes a year. Yeah. It's just not sustainable. Um, I'd rather see sustainable growth, which I think is what we have, but it has been stagnated by the fact that we do not have enough people to build houses, yeah. and we do not, we can't build enough to, to, to satisfy demand, and so therefore we've got a price issue. Um, so I don't think things are great in this industry. I think that, that there's a lot of problems to solve, and until we solve them, um, thinking about some sort of a downturn or slowdown is really, is really just kind of, it's it's, well, it's just kind of pushing that issue, yeah. all those issues yeah. aside and saying, oh, beware. Yeah. It's like, well, wait, we got all these things we gotta deal with now, yeah. and they're big issues. Well, Rich, thanks, it's great to talk to you. Great Appreciate to talk you to being you. on Thank the you. show. Thanks for the time. Rich Saka from Professional Builder Magazine. It's been a great hour, and we've got Jim Tobin coming up at the 11 o'clock as well as Michael Freiberger, professional builder, under 40 winner, and uh, builder in North Shore, Chicago. Another jam-packed hour at 11 o'clock Pacific, 2 o'clock Eastern. Hope to see you there. Professional Builder Show Village Live, presented by Western Window Systems. Thanks for watching.